Hi, this is Andrew Smith, instructor at Ferris State University and runner of art by smitty.com. Today we're going to go over how to create this treasure chest of mine uh, in 3D and capture all the details almost exactly and precisely uh, and possi possibly use this to render an, uh, you know, an HDRI image. So if you guys go to www.123dapp.com slash catch it brings you to Autodesk's new program or new software that came from Autodesk Photofly. Um, 123D Catch is basically a program that allows you to transform photographs into 3D models. Uh, the next steps we're going to go and show you uh, exactly what you need to do in order to create a chest like this or to basically go and, and find an object in real life take photographs of it uh, use Autodesk's new software to create a 3D model of it and then bring it into 3D Studio Max and light it with HDR lighting the next steps we're going to go over are how to take the photographs what type of conditions you should be taking uh, photographs in and how many photographs you should be taking of an object. Please keep in mind that the objects with reflective materials usually have a difficult time uh, rendering and in, in being created in Autodesk's 123D Catch. So now that we have all of our photographs that we took of our chest uh, onto our computer, I can go ahead, open up this folder, and go to my photos. And for the demo, um, here's all of those different photographs that I took um, of the chest. And I actually had to bring this inside because the photos outside had too much direct light. Um, and you can see here in the background, I shot this inside to get nice ambient lighting and I even had to put this cardboard box in the background um, to kind of stop that direct light from the sun coming into my room. So it's all about getting ambient lighting and not having any direct light in your scene. Uh, the ideal lighting situation is outside and cloudy but it was very su bright and sunny today which is kind of a blessing in November in Michigan. So. While it was nice weather out, kind of unfortunate for my project today. Um, but I managed and I took this inside to generate that, that nice ambient universal lighting hitting my object all the same in each direction. Because we want to light this inside of 3D as opposed to capturing the lighting information into our textures. So with that, with all these pictures here, you know, there's about 40 of them or so, 45. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start Autodesk 123D Catch. 
And the first thing I'm going to do is say create new photo scene. And I'm going to come here to photos, go to demo, and I'm going to select all of these photographs and hit open. It now has all those photographs and all I have to do is click compute photo scene. And email, you can name it. I'm going to hit, you can either have it, what this is saying is it's going to start uploading it to Autodesk's cloud server and you can either wait for it or you can just have it email you when it's done rendering on their cloud server. So I'm just going to hit wait because um, I'm in no hurry and, and I'm just going to let this thing go. And so I've already uploaded this and got my my model from the internet. So it's going to load it here into my Autodesk 1, 2, 3D catch beta scene. And, and we can take a look at this model um, generated from these photographs. Okay, so the first thing we get is our model in 3D space. And you can see it remembers and it calculates based off of different points where my cameras were when I took these pictures. Uh, so I can hover over a camera and it will show me the, the angle I took it at and it will also give me kind of a preview of the photograph that was taken in the background there. Um, right now I can zoom in here and we can see it's not two-sided but this is our rendering options. I can say wireframe um, or wireframe and texture or just texture and model. I can also click this two-sided surface button and now if I zoom in and here we can see um, both surfaces or the textures throwing, showing on both sides. Uh, if I zoom in here and I say I want to see my wireframe, it's a very low, low resolution mesh, um, especially in the back here. There's not a whole lot of information. And so what I'm going to do is say go back to here and this button here if we hover over it, it says generate mesh. Current quality is a standard mesh. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in and say, click the button. Usually it's going to load up with mobile or, or a, a draft mode mesh coming in. But I'm going to say maximum. And it say, you know, it's, it gives you a warning. It says it may significantly increase processing time. So it's probably going to take a while. Uh, and when I hit OK, it's going to say, OK, I'm going to take your photographs and this model and I'm going to recompute it and create an even higher resolution mesh. Uh, before I do that though, uh, there's a lot of information in this scene that I don't want it to worry about. So I'm actually just going to come in here and select some areas and just simply hit delete. Uh, because honestly, a lot of this stuff means nothing to me. Uh, I'm just doing this so I can get my model. This was just information it captured from the photos I took. And the, the more geometry we have in there when we tell it to create a high-res mesh, um, the longer it's going to take. So it makes sense to get rid of all of the, the stuff we don't need. And I'm actually going to come in here and delete some of this as well. And even some here in the back. Okay, so now, I mean, eventually we may remove the floor and stuff, um, but I'm going to keep th that part in here for now. And I'm going to hit this button, say maximum, OK, and I'm just going to wait for it. It's going to get rid of that, and it's going to come back to here and say upload project data. It should move fairly quickly because it's already got my data, my photos. And then it's going to skip down here to step two where it says creating photo scene. And, and that's where it's really going to take a long time and, and compute and build my scene on the cloud server. And when I say cloud server, it means basically it's not using any of your computer's hardware resources to render and create that scene. Um, it's actually, okay, and it's in queue now too. Uh, so there's other people uploading to the cloud server as well. And Autodesk is creating and rendering the scene on their servers, not on your own computer, which is really nice about this. So all you got to do is wait. And if you're in a, if you if you're busy, you got things to do, um, you can just have it email you when it's done, and then you it'll give you a link to go and download it and and start running it on your machine. So we're gonna let this uh, now it's preparing data, um, and we're gonna go ahead and let this compute the photo scene, 
and we're just going to wait and I will pause this and when we come back we'll see our high res mesh uh, that was generated. Now Autodesk 123 Catch uh, has, has finished computing our scene. Uh, it's finished downloading it to my computer and, and now we're basically just loading up the project files that it rendered on the cloud server uh, with the high quality or the maximum quality high res mesh. Okay, we're going to let this load into our scene now. All right. Very nice. Let's zoom in and, and kind of check out some areas. Um, notice there's some funky looking wavy stuff going on here in the side of the chest. Uh, isn't quite what we captured. So sometimes when you switch, um, you know, from a maximum to a standard, it tries to create more resolution in some areas and it, may, it doesn't always give you the desired results. Um, so we're going to go ahead and and call this good. A lot of times this is just a starting point um, for a 3D model that you can come in and edit later. So what we're going to do next is in part two of this we're going to go over how to take this 3D model that was generated with Autodesk 123D Catch Beta and we're going to what we're going to do is bring this into ZBrush uh, as an OBJ file, we're going to apply the textures because 123D Catch generates textures for this mesh too in a texture sheet. And we're going to show you how to apply those into, into ZBrush and then eventually uh, get this guy into 3D Studio Max. Uh, we may even go over Topo Gun and creating a low res mesh and projecting all this detail down into a game ready mesh uh, that you could use in a game engine. Okay, so that's it for part one. Thank you for watching.